Hi everyone. Oh, can be a little a bit louder. Hi everyone. It's okay. So, um, Swiss Ball is very special to me uh, because I was at the first edition of this conference at uh, 2019 as an attendant. And today I'm here as a speaker. I uh, feel very honored and very happy to be here. So, thank you all to the organizations and all of you that can uh, uh, share with, uh, with me this uh, moment. So let me introduce myself. My, my name is Jonathan Urquiza. I'm working from, uh, for Pedidos Ya as a principal uh, software engineer. And uh, I will share uh, with you uh, this talk called Preload Strategies in WK WebView. How to load Preload uh, WebView con resources in a non-web context. This is the agenda for today. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to do an introduction. Uh, I will talk about web, web views, uh, how to optimize web views, how uh, WK web view uh, man manage data, uh, preload strategies, uh, some demos, and conclusions. So today I'm going to talk about WK web views uh, preload strategies. And let's go to the beginnings. What is the first thing uh, you ask yourself when uh, you are to develop uh, a new feature? You may me, uh, think about a native approach, or if you choose native approach, you need to decide uh, Swift UI or UIKit. And if you choose a UIKit, you need to define if you're going to use a Swift or Objective-C. I hope you won't use Objective C for a new feature, no? And what about web views? Or what about a hybrid approach? Or I don't know, Kotlin mobile multi platform? I think that all of us uh, <laughs> be like this, this woman. Okay? There are many approaches uh, that can you use to uh, develop a new app or a new feature. Uh, at Pedidos Ya, uh, we use uh, very different approaches. Uh, currently, we are using native coding in Swift and UIKit. And we have uh, some web views, and we have a server driving UI screen. Let me show you. Uh, the home of Pedidos Ya is server driving UI. Uh, uh, we are writing uh, with an uh, in-house solution. Yeah. And the shop list and shop detail uh, are web views using WK Web View. And product configuration, card, and checkout are native screens. Uh, so, uh, what about web views? Yeah, web views. Is really worth it? There are some advantages and disadvantages inherent to the use of web views. What, is the, what are the uh, web views advantages? First of all, uh, release independence. Uh, you can, uh, everyone copes with uh, users with all uh, version of our application, or no? Users that have a, a really, really old version of our application that has uh, some legacy code, and we deal with it uh, every day. Uh, when you use uh, web views, you can, uh, you can deploy uh, 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 in a web server, yeah, and the release is uh, instant, see? And we have a better time to market, a common code base, because you can reuse the, the web uh, uh, for Android and iOS, but too. And if you uh, go further, you can uh, make a native interaction using uh, some bridge, uh, JS bridge, yes? Um, so, even though there are some good points about web views, uh, there are some drawbacks. And the first drawback and the greatest pain is slow load times. It's known that the, the performance in web views is worse than native. Uh, there are some uh, drawbacks, uh, worse user experience, yeah? Resources linked remotely, uh, what uh, I, I can say with that. Uh, when you uh, develop or when you code a, a web view, all the resources like fonts, style sheets, uh, images, 
uh, some scripts are linked remotely by default, and this impact in the performance or uh, in the uh, load times. And load customization, because uh, you can use, uh, you can't, you cannot use, sorry, uh, uh, like custom animations or uh, the, the new APIs for, for Apple, you need to do some tricky code or need to uh, call some bridge. So, uh, if you want to, to show or display uh, web content in uh, an iOS application, you need to use WK WebView. And I think that WK WebView has a long life ahead of it. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, WK WebView should be used in both uh, SwiftUI or, or uh, UIKit. If you want to, to show uh, or display a web content in a SwiftUI app, you need to uh, wrap the web view, the WK, WK web view, in a UI view representable. And the, the other argument is that WebKit is an open source project, and there are hundreds of developers uh, coding every day uh, making this framework. So remember, this is not silver bullet. Uh, it's not mandatory for, mandatory for you use web views or use native or use uh, no sé, some hybrid approach. You need to choose what approach fits best for you and your requirements. Okay. So uh, I, I want to, to share with you our experience at Pedisa optimizing web views in our application. In general, performance uh, is a really pain uh, in web views. Lord Kelvin said. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So we cannot improve it performance in, on our application if we don't start to measure. How, to measure, how do we measure uh, performance in Pedidosha? Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, dashboards like this uh, to, to measure uh, load times, uh, both in web views and native screen. Uh, we use uh, Firebase performance, uh, Google BigQuery integration for uh, uh, use the, this data from uh, Firebase and Google Data Studio. One sign up, uh, I have a series of posts in Medium. Uh, so at the end of the of this presentation, uh, I put a slide with some links. Yeah. Our web performance journey. Uh, at the start, uh, we started to measure uh, web view load time. Yeah. And we detect uh, some user pains. Yeah? Uh, at the start, when we started to, to measure, we detected that percentile 90 uh, load time was near six seconds. Uh, this means that 90% uh, uh, of our users needs to wait almost six seconds to uh, see the shop list screen, for example. So we start uh, to improve performance using some uh, web techniques uh, like tree shaking, uh, we drop the use of single page application uh, in order to use Next.js framework, uh, and another uh, techniques that is not the, the key of this talk, but uh, we, we, we can uh, drop or down the, the metric, and today uh, our web view load time is nearby three seconds in, in pin uh, 90, and we reduce load time by 50%. It was an animation journey. Finally, uh, these metrics help us to, uh, sorry, to uh, continuous improvement. Uh, these metrics uh, uh, help us uh, to detect uh, some uh, issues in our performance, and we can uh, improve it and fix uh, any situation that we face. So what key can we do in a mobile app to improve performance? All the techniques I mentioned are web ones. But uh, I think that uh, we can do anything, any, anything in our application. We started to investigate, and we thought, why can uh, we preload static resources like phones, uh, scripts, or some something uh, resources in our web view? But in a previous step, we know that fang companies uh, are using preload strategies, uh, and we began to experiment. First of all, uh, preload consists in fetching a resource before we require it. How does uh, WK WebView manage data? 
when we talk about WK Web View uh, data management, we talk about WK Website Data Store. Have you ever heard about this? No? OK. Uh, WK Website Data Store is an object that manages cookies, uh, disk, and memory cache, and other types of data for a web view. There are uh, two types, uh, the default data store and the non-persistent data store. The default data store um, stores the, all the, da the data uh, in, on disk, and non-persistent uh, data store uh, persists only in memory. It's like private browsing uh, in Safari. Now, we know that WK website data store persists all cache and data for a web view. This code snippet that you probably copy and, copy and paste from Stack Overflow <laughs> makes sense now. Yeah? We iterate over the, the data store and remove data from the store, and voila, you can uh, um, clear your cache for all web views in your application. So, we start to try, we try to, to start to, to, to experiment, and we try to use URL session to preload resources. Like, well, I, I make a URL session, fetch the source, and, uh, but, sorry, URL session cache, URL cache is different from WK Web View cache, so I discard this option. We try to set a custom cache in both URL session and WK Web View, but Apple, Apple doesn't provide us uh, with a way to set a custom cache in WK Web View. Uh, we explored some other approaches, and we found an HTML tag called link that can help us. So preload strategies in WK Web View. Uh, to help me to explain this, uh, I'm going to show you an example. Yeah? We have uh, two screens. See, uh, home screen and shop list screen. The shop list screen is uh, it's a web view, and we want to preload some resources in shop list before we uh, show or we push this screen. Uh, in this example, there are two scenarios. The, the first one is when home is a web view, yeah. And the second scenario is when the home is a native, scre uh, native uh, screen. Yeah? Let's analyze these scenarios. The scenario one is when home and shop list are web views. Uh, so let's dive in uh, in this scenario. First of all, uh, we have in home web view two resources. For this example, one font and one image. And for the, the second screen, uh, four fonts and one image for this example. So uh, follow me to the next, to the code. OK. It will fail. <laughs> OK. Uh, we have a, a web home. See, without preload, we enter. I'm sorry, I will check the. Internet connection. Let's clear cache. And okay. We enter to web home. Yes, we see a blank uh, page, but a uh, home screen, uh, we, we don't want to preload anything. We want to preload a uh, shop list. Yeah. This case is without any type of preload. When we go to shop list, we will see. We, did you see the the font glitch and the image uh, fading? Yeah. So let's let's try to improve this. Okay. Yeah. How can we, can we preload in a web uh, context? So we can use the HTML tag link. The link tag defines the, uh, defines the relationship between the current HTML document and an external resource. We need to specify uh, the relationship using the rel attribute. Uh, for this case, the, the two attributes that uh, uh, are, are important for, for us is preload and prefetch. But uh, prefetch is not supported uh, yet by Safari, so we need to focus 
only in relationship pretty low. Ta the, the tag link looks like this. Yes, it's like a, a HTML tag. Rel preload, the href is uh, the URL of the resource, and the as attribute um, can be found image style. Uh, it's all documented uh, in, in, in Mozilla Docs, yeah? So uh, you, you need to use the, this link uh, tag uh, inside head uh, tags. So uh, the, the first scenario with preload uh, should be like this. This is the, the code of uh, our home screen. It's really, really simple. Uh, we have uh, a title, subtitle, uh, uh, a link, and an image. If we want to, we remember, we don't want to preload anything from home. We want to preload in home shop list resource. OK? Do you follow me? Yeah. So we add this link resources, link tags, sorry. And this. Let me show you the example. We went to key. We clear cache. And we enter to the demo web home with preload. Yeah. Remember, we don't want to preload anything from home web, but we want to preload shop list. And then when we go to shop list, there isn't any uh, glitch, phone glitch, yeah? Let me continue. We go to, OK. Yeah. The second scenario see, is when it may be the, the key of this talk, is when you have a home native and a shop list web view. Uh, how can we preload web resources in a non-web context? So uh, let me show you first the, the demo. We cleared cache, and we go to demo. Yeah, this is a really, really simple UI kit uh, view controller. And when we go to, to shop list, Blank space. The, if you are on a device, uh, you see the phone glitch. Yeah, and we we will try to uh, preload in a non-web context. So let me continue at the presentation. Okay. So how can we preload in a non-web context? We built a preload mechanism. It's Quite simple, yeah. Uh, home uh, send a signal calling a function to our preloader. Preloader creates a, a web view, but web view uh, uh, it doesn't in in any view uh, in in any view or sub view. It's only a web view, yeah. And web view uh, loads a request to uh, an HTML page that uh, I will sh show you uh, next. And then WK web view uh, starts to download resources. And then when you navigate to shop list, uh, the resources are already in cache. So the preloader uh, looks like this. We have a, a function, a public function. We make the request, and we use a task with main act. Why? Because uh, WK Web View needs to be running in a main act or in the main queue. But only when you uh, build or make the, the Web View and when you start the first record. Uh, request, sorry. And then all the requests that the, the web client makes to a, a backend or a web server are called in background. Yeah? It's important to remember this. So, uh, uh, preload.html is a HTML document that contains all the sources that uh, we want to preload. Yeah? Um, in, in this case, uh, we, the, the HTML document. Uh, has no uh, body, yeah? It's only head tags. And let me show you uh, how, uh, how uh, this document uh, should be, yeah? In this case, uh, home native uh, uh, don't, don't have any resources, and Shoplift Web View has the same five resources, okay? So preload.html 
need uh, these uh, five uh, links yeah, to, to work. So let's go to the, to the demo. I will show you uh, a little bit of, of code. Loader, yes, it's the same thing. Uh, we will put some breakpoints to, to show you the, the inspector, yeah? Okay. We clear cache, and in this case, uh, we, uh, I choose to uh, put the, the preload signal after view the load, yeah? When we open uh, the view controller, yeah, I step, and we go to Safari to open some inspector, okay. And inspector, I will put aside, okay. We continue, and okay. The home is loaded, but all the five resources are uh, downloaded, yeah? And when we go to shop list, It will open uh, another web view, so I need to, to close this inspector and open another one. Oh, this one, okay. So, I put aside the simulator. And okay. You'll see that all the five resources are taken from disk. Yeah? You can clap if you want. <laughs> so, there are a, a, a last example. Yes, it's a bonus content. Yeah? That, uh, Sorry, the results, because we, we use this approach in our application. And you will, you will see uh, this two version, the 11.21, that not, has not a preloader, and 11.22, uh, which is a version with preloader. And we, uh, our load times uh, was improved by uh, 0.5 seconds in percentile 90. So, uh, there is a, a, a bonus, yeah? Uh, Apple provides us uh, with a way to provide custom resources using WU, WUK URL Scheme Handler. Uh, so, uh, it's very simple. Uh, allows you your app to handle resources uh, load from a URL web scheme, but uh, only uh, can uh, handle URL schemes that WUK WebView uh, doesn't handle itself. So uh, you cannot handle uh, resources like HTML, uh, sorry, HTTP or HTTPS. It's a, a limitation. So for example, uh, I choose uh, Peja local, but it's just local uh, for the resources. And the configuration uh, is quite simple, see? Uh, you can set the, the custom scheme handler uh, for the URL scheme. This uh, example, you need, you need to to create a custom skin handler with two both, uh, methods, your yeah, function. And uh, this, uh, this protocol uh, allows you to create the resource data from anywhere when you want. For example, local or remote, wh what you want. You can add resources locally you need to re reference these resources using uh, your custom scheme in your web, like this. And you need to add some fallback, uh, because if you uh, web you are used by Android, for example, uh, Android didn't know, doesn't know a page local or any client web uh, also. So uh, this is the last demo. Yep. And we go to the demo, and when you enter, yeah, all the resources uh, without breakpoints. 
are loaded uh, locally. Yeah. So and there there aren't uh, any glitches. Uh, the, the 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 images are local, and you you can uh, use uh, any resources that you want. So uh, let's go to the conclusions. Remember. There is no zero valid in software engineer. It's really, really important to, to know this. You should measure performance if you want to improve performance. You can preload resources in a non-web context, and you can provide local resources with custom scheme. So thank you. <laughs> Keep in touch. Okay, uh, great talk, Jonathan. Uh, so we have a couple questions for okay. you. Uh, Luis asks, um, so if you need to preload every single resource for any possible screen, the user might uh, navigate from home. Uh, wouldn't it make it uh, the home uh, really heavy? Yeah, I think that you need to, to, to preload some uh, uh, Lock uh, punctual or focused resources. Uh, if you uh, preload everything, uh, you up start time or uh, can be very uh, can be impacted by by this approach. Yeah, I, I think that you need to 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 preload some resources only. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Fernando says very important talk. Thanks for sharing with us. Yeah, uh, when exactly are you calling preload from the previous native view? Could you explain it again? Ah, okay. Uh, I, I preload uh, in uh, after uh, building load, yeah. But it uh, is a decision that you uh, need to make uh, based uh, on your application. For example, in at uh, we launch the preload after uh, the all dependencies are loaded before home uh, it become the, the load of the home. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, the preload resources are shared between uh, WK WebView instances? Yes, yes. Uh, this is uh, amazing uh, because uh, you can uh, have uh, one little instance of WK, WK WebView uh, which preload all the resources, and then when you make another WebView, the, the example is using this, uh, you can uh, have the resources cached. Yeah? And it works very well. Okay, nice. Uh, what other server-driven approaches have you tried, if any, and what made you stick to web use? Um, I, I think that uh, there, there, those are different approaches. Uh, at Payosha, we have an in-house solution for uh, server-driven UI, but uh, it, I think that server-driven UI is very difficult to adopt to all applications. Uh, in large companies, uh, maybe are uh, one of more server driving UI approaches. And uh, for the uh, requirements of our project, at the time of our project, uh, we think that, uh, we thought, sorry, that uh, web views was the, the best approach for now. But next, uh, we, we will try to, to migrate all to server driving UI. Okay. And the last one uh, for time's sake. Uh, do you use any strategy to avoid malicious users uh, to use like uh, men in the middle uh, with the web use? Um, no, I don't. Uh, we, we have a, a web team, yeah, a full stack team. Uh, we have a, a native team and a, a cybersecurity team. Uh, the, these questions uh, are. Uh, are resolved by, um, more by the, the web uh, developers and uh, the cybersecurity. But uh, as iOS developers, uh, I, I think that the ETI uh, talk uh, was talk about the uh, vectors of uh, security. Uh, I, um, I, I, I dare you to uh, wait to this talk. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Let's you. give him an applause.